Oh, all right, guys. This is the brand new projector mount from Nanlai. Oh, where is the box if we open it up? Oh, this is the new projector mount from Nanlai, and it is suited to a full-size Bowens mount, so something like the Forza 300 or Forza 500. But a lot of people had questions about this, and just, I guess, like, projector mounts in general on the Nanlai user group. So in this video, I'm going to go through and answer all your questions and show you just what you can use this for, and I guess, like, the different scenarios as well. How's it going guys? My name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. Now firstly, the new projector mount is freaking huge. Look at this. This is the new one. And if we compare this to the smaller projector mount, very big difference side by side. Alrighty, so let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the questions and uh, see how these actually perform. So the first question was, can you compare it to the smaller brother and how much brighter is it? So size-wise, obviously we know that this one is a lot smaller than the new one, but in terms of output, obviously now we're, li we're not limited to the mini Bowens mount, so we can use it with any light that has a full-size Bowens mount with, I guess, any power rating. But for the sake of this question, let's compare the Forza 150 and the FS150 through the smaller and the bigger projector, just because they're like roughly the same amount of output. So side by side, there are actually a few differences that I'm noticing straight away. So firstly, the output of the smaller Bowens seems to be slightly more than the bigger Bowens. Now, again, this could be because it's a smaller lens, so the light is technically more focused. But I also noticed that the size of the 19 degree lens or beam is also slightly different as well. So on the smaller projector, it's actually giving a slightly wider 19 degree beam than on the larger projector that you can see in this image. All right, next question is, is it gonna fit a Forza 300B? And what are the different angles such as like 19, 29, 36, etc.? What do they refer to? So this is a great question and one that might confuse a few people. So firstly, yes, the new projector does work with the Forza Forza 300B. It also works with the Forza 200 and Forza 500 as well. Now in terms of the angles or the lenses that you can get, so this one is the 36 degree, 19 degree, and you can see here they are slightly different in terms of the lenses. And basically this just refers to the width of the beam that it's actually producing. So firstly, if I was just to chuck on a FL20G Fresnel, depending on how much you actually adjust it, will determine the width of the beam. And that's the good thing about a Fresnel is that it is fully adjustable anywhere from about 45 degrees to 10 degrees. But I guess the downside or the upside of a Fresnel is that the edges of the light are very soft. So if you're wanting like a super sharp edge, that is where a projector works its magic. So we throw the projector on with a 19 degree lens. You can see that there's like a really, really defined circle, unlike the Fresnel that has super soft edges. And then if we put the 36 degree lens side by side with the 19 degree, you can see the difference in the width of the beam itself. Now when actually determining what lens you should get, I want you to keep these two things in mind. So the first one is what light am I gonna use this with and what size spaces am I gonna use it in? So going from a 19 degree lens to a 36 degree lens will actually decrease the output of the light just because it's not so focused. But if you have access to say like a Forza 500, then output isn't really an issue. However, on the other hand, if you know you are gonna be shooting in tight spaces, then the 36 degree lens is a much better option just because you get way more width out of it. But again, just keep in mind that the light output won't be as much as say the 19 degree lens. Now for my February short film, we actually use both the small projector and the large projector to make these like nice uh, beams of light or look, to make it look like light was coming through windows uh, to just add more shape and I guess definition to the background of where our subjects were. And also to then be able to provide a, I guess like a motivation to have lights coming from that angle and it worked really really good I managed to um, pick up the uh, 36 degree lens for this small projector just before shooting this and that came in so handy because the 19 degree was just a little bit too tight for such a small space. Now for the smaller projector, I paired that with the Forza 60B and I turned that all the way down to, I think about 3200 Kelvin, maybe 3500 Kelvin, just to give it a bit more of a warm glow to then again, be able to motivate that warm hair light on Joel when it was on his angle. And then the other one we used was the, uh, the large projector and that used the Forza 300B 
Now, because the light we were trying to simulate was like a blue light, I did put a, uh, a full CTB doubled over, so it was like a double CTB in front of the Forza 300B, and then I also turned the 300B up to 6500 Kelvin as well, and it actually read, made this really, really nice blue that matched really well with the uh, the Pavo tube X-Series tubes that we were using on their RGB modes. And if I show you a quick lighting breakdown, you can see just how much this uh, this projector beam is doing to the background. It just adds so much more depth rather than just having like a flat, boring wall. <coughs> oh my goodness. Oh my God, it's first time that's how we're filming. I'd love to see some comparative outputs for the Forza 500 and the Forza 300B at both 3200 Kelvin and 5600 Kelvin settings. Now, I personally don't currently have the Forza 500. However, I can show you what the output is like at a few different color temperatures on the Forza 300B right here. So this is all at 100% through the 19 degree lens on the new large projector. How thin of a line can you project with this? As with the Forza 500 with barn doors, it's still quite a wide line. So this is one of the actual things that really blew me away when I first started using projector attachments because it's it, like if you haven't used them, it seems like bloody sorcery. So here's an example of cutting light using the barn doors on the Forza 300B. And you can see it's just like this really soft blurry edge without any definition. And there's also a lot of light spilling everywhere as well. But now if we throw on the projector and start to cut the light, making sure that it's also focused on the surface that we're actually like projecting onto, we can see just how sharp of a line we can actually make. And this is a super handy tool when trying to shoot with like say mirrors or project onto something that has like a specific shape. It's really easy to cut, light, and make it work. Now, one thing I have noticed on the new large projector is that adjusting the focus isn't as smooth as the smaller version. And I think the main reason is, is because this element on the end is just so heavy. And obviously when it is mounted like this, all the weight is kind of like pushing down on the bottom. And it's just, I guess it's just too much weight to be able to slide. So you kind of have to like lift up the lens when you adjust it. Obviously here it's very smooth. But if I was to do it like this, it becomes much, uh, of course it's going to be smooth right now. But when it's actually mounted with the light and stuff, it can sometimes be quite hard to adjust. So just keep that in mind. Now, because it's not super easy to adjust, if you cut the light and it's not in focus, you will get fringing like you can see in this uh, example here. But when you do actually get it focused perfectly, th there's basically no fringing at all, which is really cool. Now, one thing I'm a huge fan of on the new projector mat is this uh, rear dust cover that it actually comes with. This is so handy because obviously you've got glass elements in there and you don't typically want a lot of dust or dirt or stuff getting in there. So being able to cover that up when you're not using it, super handy. Also coming in its own flight case is a very nice touch as well. However, I do wish they uh, offered a, I guess like soft case option as well, in case you didn't want a flight case. And I really wish that it had rubber feet on the bottom because this thing slides around the back of my car like crazy uh, when I am traveling around. So I might actually get some rubber feet to put onto this just to stop that from happening. I'd love to see the characteristics of the lens flare for when using it practically to light someone on a stage and you're going to be moving the camera behind them. Plus throw some haze and dirt in the air and show the light beams. Lastly, test on daylight only versus bicolored for any potential color fringing at the edges of uh, at the edges of the beam on a wall. All right, so this is a massive question, so let's actually break this down a bit. So firstly, what are the flare characteristics when shooting into the light? Now, some of the look will obviously be determined by the lens that you're using, but because the beam is so controlled, you won't get a lot of flaring until you are really in the beam of the light that it's actually producing. And once you're in there, it's freaking crazy. Like it's so intense. Next up, we have the light beams that it produces. And again, this is what it really excels at because the beam is so controlled and so focused, throwing like the tiniest bit of haze in the air just makes it light up like crazy. And finally, daylight versus bicolored for uh, color fringing. Here are some side by sides to show the differences. And again, like I've noticed that the color fringing is just the worst when it's out of focus, but when it's actually in focus, it's very minimal no matter what light you're actually using. I'm curious to how much power it would add for using it outdoors with a Forza 300B. So if we were to compare it to just like a Forza 300B with a reflector dish, you can see that the obviously the output is just insanely more. But I feel like this is a bit of an unfair test. So I think putting it side by side with a FL20G for now is probably a better comparison for this. Now, if you currently already have the small projector mount and you're looking at upgrading to the bigger projector mount, a couple of things to keep in mind is that the Gobos are actually a different size. So this is the Gobo 
from these, well, let it focus. This is the gobo from the small projector mount, and this is the gobo from the new projector mount. So it is actually a little bit bigger. I'm not sure if there's some adapter you can get to use these on the new one or not, but that is just something to keep in mind. I would love to see if it is possible to simulate a Sun combined with a Forza 300 bit. So previously, my go-to setup for simulating like a golden hour light or a sunlight was the Forza 300 b and the FL20G Fresnel, which works absolutely perfectly. And I guess it really just depends if you want kind of those hard edges or those soft edges, because obviously a Fresnel will give you different control to having a projector. And also a Fresnel, you'll be able to control the beam angle a lot more and a lot quicker. So I like a Fresnel for creating like a, I guess like a golden hour sunlight because like I can control it much better. And it's also packs down a little bit smaller as well. The projector is more for like, if I want to cast shadows or gobos or something onto a wall, or I really want to be able to cut the light and make it shaped in really weird, I guess, situations. Alrighty guys, that is about it for this one. If you enjoyed this one, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And I hope I actually answered all the questions that you have have around the Nanlite projector mounts. If you do have any more questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And otherwise, yeah, stay creative. Just be you. Have fun.